So I watched um, I watched the video that Wanda Maya uh, put up. It's an interview between I think uh, N I P P P or he's one of his mates, and um, um, it was interview man, and he was asked. He asked his his, uh, his friend asked Wanda Maya about what he thought after traveling to sixteen or twenty countries in Africa. What he thought was holding Africa behind, and and Wanda Maya said um, it's uh, corruption. Personally. I don't think it's corruption. I think what's really, really holding Africa behind is a lack of organization. You know, and this is just my view. Some people, some of you might disagree, but I'm pretty sure there's some people who see the way I see it. Corruption, you can't really eradicate it. There's corruption everywhere. You know, like I keep giving you an example. The England coach, the coach of the English soccer team was found to be corrupt. You know, and, and that's not just that. There's a lot of corrupt people. I think they arrested about 700 uh, uh, criminals in the UK. And then they found out some of them were actually working with the police. You know, these criminals was involved in money, extortion, laundering, and, and all this stuff. But the police were also involved. So there's corruption everywhere. There's corruption everywhere. You can minimize corruption. Right? But I think... The, to get to even get to the level of minimized corruption, organization has to come in. Has to come in. The way we do business has to change. We need to start creating businesses that have an impact on the community. But also, if you want to change that, if anywhere you work, you know, if you want to change anything, you got to involve the people. And the people have to see this. They have, they have to become part of the, of, the, of the vision. You know, if you want to say, you know what? This is where the country is. And this is where we want to put up even uh, pictures of the new city. If you want to say we're going to create a new uh, Harare if you're in Zimbabwe, we're going to see create a new Accra. This is how we want our Accra to look. Pull it up there. You know, and this is where we are. For us to get to this level, these are the things we need to do. Put that vision, that picture in everyone's head. And people will follow. You know, because no one wants to live the way some people live in Africa. Everyone wants to live happily and be able to look after their families. But we need to come together. Organization and Africans have to be part of it. I like what uh, Strive Masihiwa does. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy, but he's a Zimbabwean guy who's now a billionaire. I think he's created about 30 uh, companies in Africa worth about 30 or 45 billion. He's only worth about 2 or 3 billion dollars. But what he does... And the way he started, I would like anyone to read his story. You know, Strive Masihiwa. I think Masihiwa was spelled as M-A-S-I-Y-I-W-A. You know, he's an African billionaire who's done a lot and still keeps doing a lot for Africa. This guy looks, up, looks after like 340,000 or 340,000 kids that he sponsors all over the world. You know, they even bring his companies into into telecom. But he, he, list, look, look it up, look him up, look him up. If you want more detail, please uh, put a comment. If you want to hear more about him, and I'm going to dedicate a video where I'm where I'm just going to talk about Strive Masihiwa and what he did. He's in telecom business, you know. But his other other businesses, you know, he's the one who even uh, I was watching one of his videos where he's. Um, was getting interviewed and he said you know he sent someone to go and look at um uh the business of just the garbage collection just in harare just one city and to find out how much it's worth just that business alone is worth 300 uh million dollars just that business in one city harare not even go to blawayo and these other cities just one city 300 billion uh, 300 million dollars you know but no one is doing it you know Strive Masiwa didn't even have money to get to where he is. But what he did, he took his business and put it on the stock market in Zimbabwe. And Zimbabweans became part of that business. And as it grew, the Zimbabweans also made money from it. Now within that business, oh, there's insurance, there's all sorts of uh, uh, business under the same banner. I think it's called Econet. That's what his company called. You can look that up as well. You know, his company, his other company is called Liquid Liquid Telecom. I think they are in Uganda. Look, look this up and look up how he's managed to put fibers from Cape Town to Cairo, and now moving from east to west. I think now they are about to reach to reach uh, uh, Nigeria. Look him up. 
These are some of the things we, we can do when we come together. I even heard the first lady of Ghana ask Ghanaians to put money together for them to build uh, uh, a hospital for children, like a, an antenatal uh, clinic. You know, within a short period, people were, were able to put, come up with three three million dollars. You know, but so people are willing to do something to better ourselves. The problem is there's no opportunities. There's lack of organization. That's all. That's that's what's impeding us. Look at how Singapore did it. Mm. Singapore, there's a there's a uh, uh, some type of timber in Zambia which is called mukula. It's become it's on high demand all over the world, you know, to a point where the Zambians have said uh, the Zambian government has put a ban on exporting this uh, this mukula. But here's the funny thing: is it still even after the ban, it still come gets out of Zambia, you know. So it got out of Zambia where they've put a ban, but in uh, in um, in Singapore it didn't go, it couldn't go past. That's how uh, the Singaporeans are corrupt. But why do you think the Singaporean police they are not corrupt? Because in Singapore the police get paid well. You know, the police get paid, the civil servants get paid well. Majority of people get paid well. Per capita, people in Singapore get paid better than the people in America. And that's how they've managed to fight corruption. But for them to get to that, they were organized. And they had one goal. And in the process, everyone has benefited. Not just the politicians getting paid more than like the way it is in Africa. Nah, the civil servants get paid more. You know. Excuse me. So there's no point for you to want to go and steal. Let's look at how Singapore has managed to provide uh, housing for its people. You know, there's no reason why Africa should have shanty compounds with our natural resources. No. I know no one can live in a mansion because at the end of the day, it depends on how hard you want to work and some people about how intelligent you are. You know, if you work harder, you make money. If you are more intelligent, you make more money. And that's fine. But everyone should be able to live in a decent house. That hasn't been our priority. If it was our priority, no African would be living in shanty compounds. No African will be living in shanty compounds. You know, we can create areas like that, but with better housing, better access to water, everything more organized. It doesn't have to be mansions, but we can create two bedroom houses, apartments, whatever, just to help and put up a system that helps these people own their houses. The government of Singapore has done it, but it started with organization and having that goal. That's the only way we're going to fight corruption. You got to be able to fight, we got to be able to create uh, uh, a, uh, 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 a sort of um, action that encourages people not to allow themselves to be corrupt. You know what I mean? Like if you go to Singapore right now, there's no point for a police to be corrupt when he's getting paid so much better money. You know, so if we get organized and plan things better, I like, um, I haven't seen the video, but the new video by uh, African Tigress, which says uh, Africa is not poor, it's just poorly managed. You know, all those things, it's lack of organization, poor management, poor this, poor that. There's just no organization. Poor healthcare. It's not because we don't have uh, some of the, in the last maybe 20 years, Africa has built more world-class hospitals. But these hospitals are still not organized. It's creating those systems that help, that brings out the best out of us. You know, if you go to England, the NHS, it's just, it's, it's a system that's organized. That's it. You know, some of the hospitals there are not even as good as the hospitals in Africa. But they have a system that's organized. We don't. So lack of organization is our Achilles heel. And that's why, and to, to, to come up with this, it's not even hard. It's not even hard. I'll tell you what, if I was even just prime minister, I mean, minister of a municipal council, I can flip that place within my first term. It's not hard. People want to see cleanliness. Because when you look outside, there's actually any psychologist who agree with you. Who, I mean, who agree with me right now. You know, when you look outside and everything is, world, is organized, cars are moving. There's no cars going like this, going like this. It has an impact on the way you see on, on, your, on your brain. You know, you become, you, it calms you down. You don't become agitated and just mad. Because sometimes, because that's the environment we are seeing. The environment itself looks rough and disorganized. Our minds become like that. You know, 
They've done psychology on this. Look at how the USA uh, became the USA. People used to experiment a lot. And that's the other thing we need to become, an experimental society. We need to be able to decide to choose, to try things. You know, some things will fail, but eventually we're going to find a perfect, a perfect line. You know, but cleaning up uh, and, great, and creating and getting organized is not easy, it's not hard. You know, in some of these cities, you got, it's just chaos, pure chaos, cars going in this direction. And I'm like, dude, you can organize this easily. You know, some of these lanes change them to just be one way, others that way. And then you can have things where it's double. But in the process, you create these things where everything is moving perfectly and it's coming to the people. It's not so disorganized, you know. Nigeria has more people and is even richer than South Africa. But in Nigeria, once you come off the main road, you go into your house, the roads are like this. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, just to get to your house. You know, why is that? Because I don't think it's expensive to even change the, those roads. It's not that expensive. There are so many people, so many things that the government can do to make sure that whether you exit the main road, wherever you go, the roads are smooth. You know, by the time you get into your house, you have to run to the toilet because your stomach has been moved all over the place. You know, it's, it's not right. It's not just Nigeria. The only country where I say, you know, you will still be on the main road, you might be South Africa. But all these other countries, it's like you get off the main road, damn, you are in trouble, man. You know, it's boogoo, 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 boogoo. that's, it's just, it's not right. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not right. And uh, if we don't think that's not right, then that's why we have a problem. But if we thought that's right, that's, that's wrong, then we can get organized and find a way to change that. So I'm saying, you know. It could just even be kids. If we put them in, they change them in the youth, we change their mindset. Instead of, them, instead of them sitting down all the day, the youth, we can use the youth to our advantage. You know, some of these things could be done by them for free and just tell that every neighbor there puts the money together and put this road. As long as the road comes and then the government can keep up maybe with just the maintenance. You know, but if we get, all, we have to get, be organized. Organization is our main problem. You know, and we focus on the wrong things. I heard some people don't even um, uh, uh, like what the Maya and, and Miss Trude in South Africa. Some people are calling Miss Trude, you've bleached your skin. We don't bleach in South Africa. And Wadamaya don't even ever come to South Africa. What did Wadamaya and Miss Trude do in South Africa? They only said the truth. You know, they showed, they showed the, 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 um, the shanty compounds. They went there. They never said anything bad about it. They showed Santon. They went there. They never said anything bad about it. And they did some very good interviews with the people there. You know, but one thing they also found out was like South Africa was very divided. And that's true. You know, there's more poor people in South Africa who are black than there is poor people who are white. You know, and that's the process, though. This is the country that was designed, uh, everything was designed best for the 10%. And now you've got to bring in the 90%. You know, it's a long process. It's, it's, it's like they're starting from the beginning. They're only 25 years old. They're going to get into it. But there's nothing that Miss Trudy and Wadamaya reported about South Africa that was wrong. But look at how some of the response from these South Africans. Oh, we don't want Wadamaya. Don't, don't come to South Africa again. It's, it's just stupid. You know, white people that uh, I've never said you don't want CNN or you don't want uh, all these other channels and, and all these other white people that come and only show or talk about some of the terrible things that are happened to them when they, when they don't even show the positive side. You never say anything about it. This is the only time, this is why you, when it comes to xenophobia, we only attack other black people. You know, we need to change our thinking. We really need to change our thinking. And sometimes like I'm, I'm going to promote this. We got to be overt. Bring out what you're not happy about. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. And please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Bye.